This is the RX 6500 XT. And this is the RTX 3050. The 3050 is more powerful, the 6500 XT costs less. But which is the better value? Seriously, I'm asking you, which is better? Uh, you don't know? Oh, I guess we're just gonna have to find out together then, won't we? Oh, hi there. <laughs> How's it going? Techdweeb here. Oh, thanks for clicking on the video today. So yeah, the, the 6500 XT is a fine GPU. I did a review of this, unboxing it, testing it in a bunch of games. So if you're interested in seeing that, there's a link to that video linked in the description below. It's a good GPU for the price. At the time of filming, the cheapest RX 6500 XT on Newegg is 200 bucks. For that price, I, I think it's a good value. A great value, actually. But a GPU's value, as I've said many times, is only as good as the performance you get at the price you pay compared to what else is available at that price. Now, there really isn't any RTX GPUs at this $200 price category. Uh, the closest NVIDIA option we have is the RTX 3050, which is much more expensive, but it's still relatively affordable, and it's actually a good deal for the price as well, <laughs> in my opinion, even more so as the prices are dropping. Uh, the cheapest 3050 I can find on Newegg is 370 bucks. The 6500 XT has gotten uh, a bad rap since it launched for some reason. I don't entirely know why. I feel like maybe everybody was just kind of super frustrated at the height of the GPU shortage, mining, crypto scalping cataclysm that has gripped us for the last few years, and they really wanted a cheap budget GPU that would offer a great performance at a great price. And the 6500 XT didn't deliver great performance. I think we can all agree on that. It does have shortcomings, but, and that's a big but, it's only 200 bucks. So you're building a PC and you want a cheap graphics card, not bottom of the line entry level super budget like the RX 6400, maybe not something mid-range that's going to cost more than the rest of your components your computer all put together, something like a RX 6600 or an RTX 3060, you really only have two options. From AMD, you have the 6500 XT, and from Nvidia, you have the RTX 3050. Now, I'm not here to compare the performance of the 6500 XT to the 3050. The 3050 is better. <laughs> That's not news. We know this. Everyone knows this. You can look up the benchmarks yourself. Or check out my review of this GPU, link it below. If you want the best performance, th then go for the 3050. However, the 3050 costs more money. The 6500 XT will give you less FPS, but it also costs less money. So what I like to do in this situation is calculate the actual performance you get for the money you spend. This is how you can compare GPUs at different price points. Which is the better value? The $200 6500 XT or the $370 RTX 3050? And there's only one way to answer a question like that, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another GPU Smackdown. 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 In this corner, the underdog that everyone loves to hate for some reason. It's the AMD RX 6500 XT. And in this corner, the wimpiest little dinky RTX card there is, but hey, at least it's an RTX card, the NVIDIA RTX 3050. Which one's better? Well, the 3050's better, obviously, but which is the better value? Well, I don't know, uh, but we're gonna find out. We gots to put these GPUs head to head. Who's gonna take home the best value GPU trophy? The 6500 XT, or will it be the 3050? Place your bets in the comments below. And while you're down there, subscribe! Alright, enough blabber god, let's do this thing. Smack down! Smack down! Smack them down, yeah! I'm running both of these GPUs in the same system. This is my little ITX 12400F build that I did recently on the channel. There's a link to that video below if you want to see me put it together and check out the specs. Both these GPUs will be run at PCIe Gen 4 speeds. And just to keep things fair, since the RX 6500 XT has reduced performance on PCIe Gen 3, we'll test that too. So stick around to the end for that, and I'll also mention that the footage you see on screen was captured separately. I didn't record while doing the benchmarks. We're going to be testing out the performance in 5 games today. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, The Witcher 3, Far Cry 5, God of War, and Cyberpunk 2077. Why did I choose these games? Because shut up, that's why. Okay, enough blabbering on. Let's get to the gaming tests. Let's start off our testing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As usual, <laughs> my favorite benchmark game, running at 1080p with the highest preset, which isn't actually the highest settings, 
Don't you just hate when games do that? Like, don't call it the highest if it's not the highest. Oh, <laughs> good sheesh. Okay, so our RTX 3050 got an average of 79 FPS, which is uh, amazing. I'm actually kind of blown away at how well the cheapest RTX GPU performs in demanding games, even compared to the mid-range GPUs like the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. Anyways, at, at 370 bucks, that means that the 3050 gets an average FPS per dollar about of 0.21. This is a metric that I use to compare the value of a GPU, FPS per dollar. Uh, you want this value to be high to get lots of FPSs for your dollar, so the higher the better. Okay, so how did the 6500 XT do? Well, it got 53 FPS. That's not nearly as high as the 3050, but we gotta keep it by the price. The 6500 XT is 200 bucks, which means that it offers a value of 0.27 FPS per dollar. So even though the 3050 gives us better frames per second than the 6500 XT, looking at the actual difference in FPS compared to the cost of the GPUs means the 6500 XT gives us a 28% better value. In the shadow of the Tomb Raider, at least. <laughs> but we can't decide based on one game alone, so let's try The Witcher 3. We're running at 1080p max settings, and looking very fine indeed, thank you very much. The 3050 gets an average of 74 FPS, which means in terms of value, it comes out with an FPS per dollar of 0.20. As for the RX 6500 XT, well, running the same benchmark with the same settings and the same system, the 6500 XT got an average of 59 FPS. However, considering the $200 price tag, that means that it came out ahead in the value comparison at 0.29 FPS per dollar. That means that the 6500 XT is a 45% better value than the RX 3050 in The Witcher 3. So, uh, so far it's looking like the 6500 XT, the underdog, the GPU that everyone loves to hate, is actually mopping the floor with the RTX 3050. So far. We have more tests to do though. Here's Far Cry 5, uh, 1080p, ultra settings. The RTX 3050 got an average FPS of 92. That, that's pretty great. I think we can all agree on that. And that means that it comes out with an FPS per dollar value of 0.25. Okay, that's good. Now the 6500 XT comes along and gets an average of 82 FPS. Not much lower than the RTX 3050, and I think you could probably guess what's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that means that the 6500 XT comes out way ahead of the value proposition with an FPS per dollar value of 0.31, which is 64% better than the 3050. 64%! Like, come on! People hate this GPU. What? Why? Why hate it? It's not powerful enough? Look at the price! It's $200! So you tell me. You tell me of a GPU that gives you better FPS per dollar than the 6500 XT. I I'm all ears. If you can't do that, then you have no right to complain that the 6500 XT isn't good enough. Because it is. It just is. So saith Tectoweeb. However, Shadow the Tomb Raider, and The Witcher 3, and Far Cry 5 are all older games at this point. But what about newer games? Well, here's God of War. Running at 1080p with the original preset, our RTX 3050 averaged 80 FPS. And at 370 bucks, that means that it gets a value calculation of 0.21 FPS per dollar. And how does the 6500 XT do? 63 FPS. At $200, that means that it gets an FPS per dollar value of 0.31 which is 48% better than the 3050. The 6500 XT in God of War offers a 48% better value. I mean, it should be pretty obvious at this point, but the 6500 XT is just a way better value than the RTX 3050. Let's do one more test though. Cyberjunk 2077. 1080p medium preset. <laughs> this game definitely favors NVIDIA cards. Uh, this we know. So how does the RTX 3050 do? Well, it got an average of 65 FPS and 0.18 FPS per dollar. And that's actually a really good FPS for this game at these settings. And, and since the 3050 is an RTX GPU, it could take advantage of DLSS to get that FPS up even higher. That's not fair though. We need to run these benchmarks at the same settings that the 6500 XT doesn't have access to DLSS. But I do have to admit that DLSS would be a good reason to buy a 30 series GPU. Okay, so our 6500 XT did not so great. It only got 41 FPS. That's not where I like my FPS to be in 
FPS games. Uh, first person games. So it can't really play this game at these settings at a decent frame rate. And in terms of value, that means that the 6500 XT gets 0.20 FPS per dollar, which is a little bit higher than the 3050. It's 11% higher. So it's not that much better of a value and it does have DLSS. So I'd probably choose the 3050 personally for games like Cyberpunk, but this is about the numbers. And the, the, the numbers don't lie. And the 6500 XT came out ahead again, if only by a tiny margin. Taking all the calculations into account across all our benchmarks, the RTX 3050 came out with a total average FPS of 78 FPS. And again, it costs $370, so that means that it gets an average FPS per dollar value of 0.21. And the 6500 XT, across all five of the benchmarks, averaged 60 FPS. And at the asking price of $200, that means that it gets a value calculation of 0.30, which is much better than the RTX 3050. 43% better, in fact. This is how much more bang for the buck you get with a 6500 XT. Yeah, the 3050 is the better GPU but it costs almost twice as much. The 6500 XT has shortcomings, but if you're looking at pure raw gaming horsepower compared to the price you spend, well, the answer is perfectly clear. The 6500 XT is the winner, <laughs> no question. Yay. Yay. But wait, what about that PCIe 3.0 thing? Isn't that a thing? Doesn't the 6500 XT have worse performance when running on PCIe 3.0? Well, yeah. Yeah, it does actually, because the PCIe connection of the 6500 XT only have, has four lanes, which means when running on PCIe Gen 3.0, it does take a performance hit. I tested three games at both PCIe Gen 4 and PCIe Gen 3. On the 6500 XT, Shadow of the Tomb Raider went from 53 FPS down to 41 FPS, which is a 29% performance hit. That was the worst loss though. God of War went from 63 down to 61, so barely any different there. And Far Cry 5 went from an average of 82 FPS down to 82 FPS. So no loss there. On average, it lost about 8% performance in my three tests, but really it'll depend on the games you're playing. So does this mean that we should subtract 8% of the performance difference from running on PCIe Gen 3? Oh, not so fast, because every GPU loses performance on PCIe Gen 3. Not just the 6500 XT. Yeah, the 6500 XT loses more performance on average than most GPUs because of the limited bandwidth with those four PCIe lanes. <laughs> but if we run one GPU on PCIe Gen 3, then we gotta do the other one. This is something that most reviewers are leaving out, and it's a big over cited by a picket. So on PCIe Gen 3, the RTX 3050 does take some losses. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we go from 79 FPS down to 73 FPS, which is an 8% loss. In God of War, we go from 80 FPS down to 76 FPS, which is a 5% loss. And in Far Cry 5, we go from 92 FPS down to 91 FPS. So basically no difference there, just 1%. Overall, the 3050 loses about 5% performance. So both GPUs lose performance on PCIe 3.0. If we take the average difference on PCIe Gen 3, then the 6500 XT gets an average of 61 FPS, which comes out to 0.31 FPS per dollar, and the 3050 gets an average of 80 FPS, which is 0.22 FPS per dollar. <laughs> so even here, the 6500 XT is a 40% better value than the 3050. It's not even close. The 6500 XT is the winner, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. Honestly, going into this test, I had no idea which GPU would come out on top. I suspected the 6500 XT would come out ahead, but because the difference in performance is so big and the difference in price is so big, I had a feeling I was going to be surprised. <laughs> and I was. Seriously. The RX 6500 XT is 43% better on PCIe Gen 4, and even on PCIe Gen 3 where it should be handicapped into oblivion according to the reviews of this thing, it's still 40% better than the 3050. I, I don't mean to bash the 3050. If you have the money to spend, even considering the value of the 6500 XT, there is still good reasons to buy NVIDIA's RTX series. If you want any sort of usable performance in any ray tracing, well, RTX is way better at, at that than the RX. If you need a GPU for encoding or streaming, if you need more than two freaking display connections, then the 6500 XT isn't going to work for you. 
And of course, there's DLSS. That is a good reason to buy an RTX GPU. And that's one of the reasons I personally have invested in several RTX GPUs for my PCs. I think FSR 2.0 is going to change the game, giving any GPU the ability to upscale with DLSS quality without needing an RTX GPU. But there's only like a, a few games that do that so far and who knows when it's going to become commonplace, if ever. So as things are right now, with the tech we have and the prices being what they are, if you want the best bang for the buck gaming performance, then look no further than the 6500 XT. It's as simple as that. And that brings us to the end. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a 6500 XT? What about an RTX 3050? Are you happy with it? Is the 6500 XT a loser? <laughs> Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you hate me? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you liked the video. Or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Check me out on Patreon, link below. Uh, you'll make it into the credits at the end of the videos. And there's some other fun perks that might interest you. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. As always, I'm TechTweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye